Welcome to part two of this q and I did part one on Tuesday and everyone really, really liked it and I had a whole bunch of questions left over. So I wanna answer these questions in part two and I actually got some more questions on that video that I want to address. So if your question wasn't addressed, then definitely keep watching. And if your question was addressed, then still keep watching because there are some awesome questions in this video. So before I get started, I wanna get straight into it, but I just wanna ask if you haven't already subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. You can see I'm nearly at 20,000 and from 20,000 I wanna to get to 50 and from 50 I wanna to get to 100 and the only way I can do that is if you click subscribe. So definitely hit that subscribe button and if you have recently subscribed in the last couple of weeks, let me know in the comments down below. Say you're new here because I wanna welcome you to the channel. I love messaging every single person who comments and subscribes. And without further ado, let's just get cracking on with the video. I've got all the questions here on my trusty iPad. Let me just make sure everything's working audio wise. Everything's working audio, light is good. Let's get started. So always autumn sky asks how to get started in print on demand, digital marketing, online business with nothing. That's a great question. And I do a lot of videos on this kind of, this kind of thing. And I would say if you want to get started online with no money, print on demand, go with Redbubble or Amazon Merch, you don't need any money down, you can just create designs and use organic, and use their organic sales to actually, you know, make some money. I know a lot of you don't like Redbubble, a lot of you think mm, not the best, but look, based on experience, I would say Amazon Merch and Redbubble are the best two platforms if you're just going for organic sales. And then if you're talking about, you know, other online businesses or digital marketing, well, it doesn't cost anything to create a YouTube channel, and that way you can do affiliate marketing, you can sell digital products. It doesn't cost anything to create an Instagram following, so you don't actually need money to get started online. There are so many different ways to make money online. And if you want, I mean, I wasn't planning on this, but if you want, I can make a video further just on this topic of like, I don't know, five or 10 ways to make money online with zero money down, because I can think of 10 right now, but that's not what this video is about. Question two. Facebook ads for traffic or conversion, which is best in your opinion for t-shirt sales? So a lot of you might not know this, but when you're creating a Facebook ad, you can pick um, different ad types. So you can pick a conversion ad or you can pick a traffic ad. A traffic ad means you're paying for traffic. You're paying for people to click the link and go to your page. And a conversion ad is you're paying for conversion. So you're paying for people to click the link and actually buy, right? So you're getting charged every single time someone buys or traffic, you're getting charged every single time someone clicks the ad which is better for t-shirts well in my honest opinion i would start t-shirt i would start with a page post engagement ad and then i would move to a traffic ad and then i would go to a conversion ad i would only do a conversion ad with a retargeting audience not with just a general audience because i end up spending a lot of money because the, the audience won't be targeted right so i only want to use a conversion ad because otherwise they can end up being very very expensive so i hope that made sense right Start with page post engagement, go to traffic, and then once you've got a retargeting audience set, go to conversions. Right, Vyed asks question three, yoga, coffee, art, pop music, gym, meditation, fast food, which niche is best to start with? Um, I'm gonna have to be honest with you, Vyad. I'm not gonna be able to tell you which niche to go into and anyone who can tell you, you know, go into this niche, it's gonna make you a lot of money is lying to you. Okay, the only way to find out if a niche is going to make you money is based on research and doing a lot of it. I haven't researched into, you know, I've, I've done research into gym, but I haven't researched into the other ones. So I can't tell you whether or not this is going to be, these are going to be successful niches and which one to start with. Another thing which no one really thinks about is if a YouTuber tells you to go into a certain niche, they're not just telling you to go into that certain niche, they're telling thousands to go into that certain niche depending on how many views their video gets which is why you've probably seen i haven't really done very many niche videos i want to start doing them but i'm trying to think about how i can do them so that only a few people can watch them right otherwise it just becomes stupid otherwise everyone's going to the same niche anyway question three i think or four i don't know margins on redbubble are really low is it possible to stay profitable after facebook ads that's a great question joseph Honestly, I would say no at this point in time, now that shipping is so expensive. I would say what you could do with Facebook ads is you could break even, you could build up your Redbubble store and then you can just leave ads and hope to get organic sales now that you've built a reputation on your Redbubble store. That is what I would say. But if you just if you do wanna do the ads, then 
you might not make money from it you will probably break even or if not lose money but over the long term you are building up your redbubble account right and if you build up your redbubble account you get followers you get likes maybe you become a featured uh, account because you've got so many followers and likes and then your shop should actually start getting organic views and organic sales so that could be worthwhile question number i don't know anymore. This was on a YouTube comment. Hi, Shimmy, I'm new to your channel. I like your video, blah, blah. Here's a question for you. What conversion rate tells you if a shirt design is good or not? How many visitors of your page design actually buy a shirt? Great question. Really, really good question. And to be honest, I don't really do this on conversion rates. I do this based on ROI, so return on investment. So if I spend $10 and I make 12 selling t-shirts, am I in focus? I am in focus. Um, then you know, it's profitable, so keep going, right? If the page gets 100 views and, you know, it doesn't get the best conversion rate in sales, but it's still profitable, then go for it. I wouldn't say there's a set number, like, you know, I need a 25% conversion rate from visitors to buyers in order to keep this shirt going, because you might be able to see profit with a 5% conversion rate. So it all depends on when you're seeing profit and your ROI, okay? So just bear that in mind. Next question, how do I get designs for my print on demand or create one. Well, Charles Baker, I would say use placeit.net. I've got links in the description. I know they are affiliate links, but I do really stand by Placeit. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant company, especially if you're struggling to create designs. What you can also do is you can search Google for your niche and then see what everyone else is doing and kind of like not copy them, but you know, get inspiration. Next question. What is the best extreme sport you've tried so far? This is a cool question. It's not a print on demand question. I kind of like that. Um, my answer to that is probably snowboarding. I like doing a lot of extreme sports. Um, I've recently got into mountain biking big time. Um, you know, I'm trying to hit these jumps harder and harder and harder. But um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. But I would say my, my most extreme sport I've probably done is snowboarding because I've had my biggest accident snowboarding. Um, I've had my nearest death experiences snowboarding. So I would probably say that's the extremist of sports I've done. I've never like jumped out of a plane yet. Um, but yeah, I would say that. I like that question. It was about me, not about business. That was interesting. Anyways, what happens to returns G tender? Hope I'm saying your name right. I have absolutely no idea. What happens to returns? I assume you're talking about print on demand here because this is predominantly print on demand questions. I would say that the company handles them depending on which company you're using. Okay, if you're using Webbubble or, or Teespring, stuff like that, you handle, they all do the customer service. So that's perfect, right? If you're doing it on Shopify yourself, then, you know, you're gonna have to handle the returns. And I've never had to do that. So I've never really thought about returns because I don't even know if people have returned it because I've never had to handle them, right? It's always the company that handles them. So honestly, unless you're, if you're doing Shopify, I don't know what's gonna happen to your returns. If you're doing Teespring or Webbubble, they should handle it for you. Now with something like the eBay dropshipping idea that I said a while ago, with those kind of returns, then you can, if they want to return it, you can either just say, you know what, keep it, I'll re refund you if it's not very much, or they can return it and then you can return it to the guy. Hello, Morris. What's the best idea where I can find new niches for print on demand? What's your opinion about the website Merch Informer and T-Spy? And thank you so much, sincerely. Right, so T-Spy, I've actually done a video on already. You can go and check that out. Um, I didn't think it was worth it just because it was very expensive for what it was. And, you know, the information they gave you wasn't that detailed. How long is this video? I want to keep this video again. I don't want to go over 12 minutes on this Q&A. And then um, Merch Informer. I've heard Merch Informer is brilliant. I've actually used Merch Informer for a while. I would recommend a Merch Informer if you can afford it, but it's more based around Amazon Merch. So it tells you the top selling products on Amazon and that kind of stuff. So if you're gonna sell on Amazon, then Merch Informer is brilliant. If you're gonna sell on other platforms, Merch Informer can still work to get an idea of niches, but it's not as accurate. Okay, and that's kind of where you can find new niches. But to be honest, to find new niches, literally just go and search Google, search Redbubble, see what's hot selling, see what's selling well on Teespring and do that. Right, next question, JL. How do you find time to do everything? I'm retiring at the end of the month and I want to start an online business. What should I concentrate on? How do I find time to do everything? Um, to be honest, I've cut a lot of things out. I haven't watched a movie in a very long time. I used to watch a lot more Netflix than I do. I don't really watch Netflix anymore ever. Um, I would say I get up at 5.30 a.m. like an entrepreneur and I go to bed at like 1 a.m. But I don't. I get up at normal times, um, like 8 a.m. 
right? Sometimes earlier, sometimes later. And to be honest, most of the time I just focus on work. I, I actually work a bit too much, I think, towards the, like even late in the evening. I'm still working, you know, seven, eight, nine p.m. during supper or after supper. I kind of always just gravitate towards my laptop and work. Um, and that's because also I work at home. I cancel my office, so it's actually kind of bad in a way because I'm just constantly focused on work. But I would say that's kind of how I find the time to do everything. And also, I don't find the time to do everything. There is so much stuff I neglect. There are so many businesses that I don't focus on well enough. So, so yeah, I'm I'm still trying to do time management a bit better. My time management isn't so good. It's kind of just like work, work, work. I just recently went away to Scotland and I found myself most of the time working, which wasn't fun because even though I love working, I was on holiday. So you kind of have to do time management. And then you're retiring and what business should you concentrate on? I would say concentrate, I would say create an Amazon FBA business. If you've got the time now, you've got a bit of money, you know, like 1,500, 2,000 pounds or dollars, create an Amazon FBA business. It's a it's an evergreen business, it's long lasting and eventually you could sell it if you want. And I just think it's a brilliant business. And that's the business that I did that really kickstarted my whole online career. All right, thank you, Jimmy. I have a question about niches. As I know you and all people say it's better to have a specific niche. All of you talk about interest niches, job titles, cats, but what about having a product niche store like shop? Okay, so he's asking, instead of having a niche like cats, a cat niche, but having what about just having a store that sells just stickers or just t-shirts or just home products? That's absolutely fine, except unless you have a humongous budget for advertising, it's gonna be very, very difficult. The reason we niche down and then niche down again is because advertising is a lot cheaper and it's a lot easier to get sales. But if I just have a you know, a sticker website selling stickers for cats and dogs and guns and snowboarders and mountain bikers and couches and, you know, coffee enthusiasts, then it's going to be very hard to pinpoint an audience and send them to your website. That's why we like to niche down and then branch out as we build our audience. Start with a, with a focus and then branch out the more traffic you get. Oh, I've got two more questions, but I'm at 12 minute 45. You know, let me just do these two more questions. Okay, so, hey, I love your videos. Um, I'm recently having a problem where people are stealing my designs. Oh, okay, so this is a difficult one. How can I solve this problem? Ooh, so firstly, have you messaged Redbubble or Teespring or the website where these designs are being stolen? Have you proven that they're your designs first? And if you have, it's a bit difficult. You can you can message the seller maybe, you can speak to a lawyer. Look, I, I am not an expert in this field. So I don't want to give the wrong advice. I would say speak to a lawyer or look at the terms and conditions on these websites. But all I'll say is for the majority of people who are nervous out there about getting their design stolen, think of it like this. There are billions of people in the world. If you are not doing a design or not sharing a design because you're scared of getting it stolen, you're going to get zero sales, right? If you post a design out there and you get a few sales, but it gets stolen, you're still getting your sales, right? It just how someone else is also getting sales what can you do but it's better that your design is out there actually making you money as well and then eventually if someone does steal your design which is rare i i i think i've only had one person or, or something like that steal my design but if someone does steal your design you can then sort it out with them or with the company that they've put their design on right i'm new to your channel uh here's a question for you what conversion rate tells you the t-shirt design is good or not so i've already answered this question back there marcus so again i think I, you know what, i think i probably put the same question in um yep i did i put that question in twice um anyway so that's it for the video brilliant okay look if you want me to do more q and a's like this um i could do a part three but i'd have to obviously get more questions because i'm now out of questions so i would probably do that on instagram so if you do want to follow me on instagram that is where i gather all of these questions and then i sometimes use the youtube comments if you know i don't have enough instagram questions so go and check out my instagram it's you know actually morris one if you're not already following me every so often i'll post a story saying ask your questions you can ask me whatever you want from you know print on demand to amazon fba to extreme sports to whatever you want really and i will answer them in the next q a so i just want to say i want to end this video it's getting quite long i'm sorry for that thank you very very much for watching i will see you on sunday's video as i do videos sunday tuesday and thursday thanks for watching guys and girls so I've got to end this video. I'm so bad at ending videos, right? I just keep talking and I've got to get better at that. I've got to get better at that. Anyway, thank you for watching.